Two years ago, if you would have told me that a bridge in Baltimore was going to collapse, I wouldn't have guessed that it would be the Key Bridge. I would have had a different guess. Just a few miles up the river from where the Francis Scott Key Bridge once stood, the Hanover Street Bridge sits deteriorating. It's still open to traffic, seeing thousands of cars pass over it per day, but it's no secret that the bridge is in poor condition and has been needed to be overhauled or replaced for quite some time now. But now, there's one really big change that's increased the urgency of such a project. Since the key bridge fell, the Hanover Street Bridge has now become a primary detour for a lot of traffic, especially hazmat loads. The two nearby tunnels are off-limits to many types of hazardous materials, so because of that, the Hanover Street Bridge is one of the only options. There's been a lot of talk in Baltimore about bridges over the past year and a half since the key bridge fell. The catastrophic collapse of the Key Bridge after being struck by a container ship shocked the world, and it gave a glimpse into how thin the veneer of safety that we live with can sometimes be. On some level, this incident was a fluke, a convergence of several bad things happening all at the wrong time. But it was also a wake-up call and a reminder that America can't get complacent regarding its infrastructure. It all needs to be maintained, and it all needs to be updated from time to time. It's not cheap, but on the bright side, it's typically one of the few issues that people can agree on as being an important function of government. But simply agreeing isn't enough. It takes will, resources, and hard work to keep it all operating efficiently. The aforementioned Hanover Street Bridge is a prime example of a lot of talk, but very limited action. It doesn't take an expert bridge inspector to know it's a problem when you see daylight through a bridge deck where you shouldn't be seeing daylight, or exposed rebar that's rusted all the way through. But despite these obvious issues, combined now with the increased flow of traffic, including all the heavy trucks loaded with hazmat cargo, the future of this bridge still continues to sit in limbo. Meetings and reviews and community discussions began a decade ago, and despite all these meetings and reports and federal grants, the bridge is still in roughly the same bad condition that it was a decade ago. Chunks of concrete fall from it on a fairly regular basis, so much so that scaffolding was put up over a walkway that passes underneath the bridge. Now I'm far from a bridge expert, so this is just one uneducated person's opinion, but what I saw was enough to make me a little bit nervous to be standing underneath of it. Spalling concrete isn't always a cause for major alarm bells, but in the case of the Hanover Street Bridge, there were sections where so much concrete had fallen out that there was a significant amount of exposed space inside the rebar cage. Not surprisingly, virtually all the exposed rebar was severely corroded and some of it had actually rusted all the way through. This was one of the sections I found most unsettling. A significant amount of concrete had broken off the end of a concrete support, exposing the ends of all the rebar as well as significant deep cracks in the remaining concrete. And on either side of the support there was deep spalling and in one area you could see a significant amount of daylight through the bridge where you would definitely not want to see daylight. And of course, as I mentioned before, all the exposed rebar was badly corroded. Now being primarily a concrete arch bridge, it's totally different design than the key bridge and isn't susceptible to the same types of catastrophic failures that the key bridge faced, but concrete bridges can have their own types of failures. So it may or may not be a cause for immediate concern from a structure standpoint. I'll leave that up to the experts to make that call. But the overwhelming consensus and the point of this video is the bridge has reached or exceeded the end of its useful life. But don't just take my word for it. Let's take a look at the official reports. It is easy to rag on American infrastructure, but there's actually a fairly robust inspection schedule that in place for all bridges over a certain size. Now, according to the official reports, the bridge is in poor condition, no surprise there, but the structure is still within acceptable standards, albeit towards the bottom of what's acceptable. One area where the bridge gets particularly low marks is in regards to bridge deck geometry. And this is no shocker, as the travel experience across the bridge is terrible. Narrow lanes, minimal shoulders, even sketchier sidewalks for the few brave pedestrians who dare to try to cross it, and a confusing reversible center lane all make for quite an unpleasant ride, to put it lightly. Then throw in the rim-smashing potholes and the clanky old drawbridge section, and it's obvious that the bridge needs to be overhauled. The concrete deck was actually resurfaced back in like 2018 or 2019 with asphalt. But in just a few short years, the surface is already filled with monster potholes once again, which this in and of itself is a bad sign. The fact that the surface 
deteriorated so badly so quickly means that whatever's underneath the surface layer probably isn't in very good shape either. So if you still need convincing that something needs to be done about the Hanover Street Bridge, let's turn to one source that we all know is always correct, and that's Google. Here's a couple Google reviews. I'm putting these up partially because some of them are kind of funny, but also just to illustrate how just about everybody who goes across the bridge recognizes that it needs an update. So then the question becomes, what do we do with the bridge? Do we tear it down and start over? This is the far more expensive option, but it does have the benefit of being less disruptive to traffic. The downside to this option, besides the expense, is that it would be erasing all the history of the old bridge. The existing bridge is officially known as the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Bridge, and it's a critical link into Baltimore coming from the south across the middle branch of the Patapsco River. It was completed in 1916, to replace the Light Street Bridge, a wooden bridge that had burned down in 1914. Architecturally, it featured four prominent towers at the drawbridge span and a series of concrete arches. Despite being only about a half mile long, it's still one of the largest reinforced concrete bridges in Maryland. So because of the cost and the history, I would tend to lean towards a large-scale rehab of the bridge. This option has been studied multiple times during all the reviews of the last decade, and is estimated to cost just a fraction of what a new bridge would cost. But whatever they choose, and this is my main purpose for making the video, my primary hope is that they make a decision soon and they proceed soon. The increased traffic is putting additional and somewhat unexpected stress on a bridge that's known to be at the end of its useful life. Whether it gets overhauled two years from now or 15 years from now doesn't really change the fact that it absolutely needs to be overhauled. And all that happens by waiting is costs will inevitably go up, drivers will bend more rims and pop more tires, more accidents will happen as a result of the poor condition and poor layout, and anyone who drives through will get the impression that Baltimore is a failing city with failing infrastructure. And that's not even factoring in the increasing likelihood that something truly catastrophic happens in the time while waiting for a new bridge. Among all of this, I think the most frustrating thing is that construction doesn't need to take as long as it currently does in most Western societies. It can be done a lot quicker and to the same standard that it's currently done at. It just needs to be prioritized in a way that our current system usually doesn't. The Empire State Building was built in a year with 100-year-old technology. Today, a similar project would likely take four times that or more, despite vastly more advanced tech. Even in an emergency replacement scenario, it feels like there's no sense of urgency to get things built. The old key bridge went down in early 2024. Now we're closing in on two years after the incident, and there's virtually no visible progress other than the debris being cleared away. A replacement isn't expected till 2028, with a cost of $2 billion. And that's assuming everything goes according to plan and there's no further delays. So even if you assume the need for a year for demolition and planning, that's still a roughly three-year construction timeline. In the meantime, tens of thousands of drivers per day are diverted out of their way to more congested routes. That means more pollution from time and traffic and less time that people are spending with their families. It means more Baltimore area businesses who relied on easy access across the river will see their margins cut, and some may even go out of business as a result of this. There's so many second and third order effects from losing a critical piece of infrastructure, I don't think they're always fully appreciated. The ripple effects of having good or having bad infrastructure can be so positive or so negative that it should be one of the government's highest priorities, even if it means shifting funding and attention away from more headline-grabbing affairs like foreign entanglements. Building quicker and building more efficiently can and does still happen in some places around the world. Recently, the tallest bridge in the world opened in China. The Huyang Canyon Bridge opened up. The deck is so high above the river below that you could stack the Washington Monument on top of the Empire State Building and it would still fit underneath the road deck. It's an incredible feat of engineering, something far and away more challenging than replacing a relatively typical bridge like the Key Bridge, yet construction on this bridge also took about three years. But you may be saying, well, that doesn't count because it's in an authoritarian country, and they don't have the same high standards for safety and workers' rights and things like that. 
But it's not just China that has the ability to build remarkable things quickly. It's basically every developed nation if they choose to prioritize it. The Milau Viaduct, one of the most incredible feats of engineering in human history, was built in France between late 2001 and 2004. And the road deck is roughly five times as high. Again, on a similar timeline of what's being proposed for the Key Bridge, despite an astronomically more challenging project. Even in the U.S., it's been shown that we can build quicker when we want to. The Sanibel Causeway took heavy damage during Hurricane Ian. In only two weeks, a temporary replacement was built, and in under two years, permanent repairs had been finished. Construction can be done much quicker than we currently do it. As a society, we've accepted these long, drawn-out timelines because we don't always fully appreciate the importance of safe and efficient infrastructure, and because bureaucrats will always defend the drawn-out timelines, because that's what they get paid to do. They'll say it's for safety, or they'll say it's for environmental friendliness, or aesthetics, or whatever. But these factors can be reviewed far quickly than they currently are. It just needs the will to be done. So back to the Hanover Street Bridge. Everybody knows it's in poor condition and is an increasing concern. But it still looks like we're many years off and many more reviews and community meetings and government grants away from a permanent solution for it. Hopefully, it doesn't get to a point where it requires an emergency replacement because something catastrophically went wrong. But as more and more years pass by and traffic volume continues to increase, that likelihood grows. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe so you catch each new video that comes out every weekend.